Hello and welcome to this uh, quick demonstration of UVI Workstation String Machines. This is a UVI expansion made by UVI.net intended for the UVI Workstation which is a free sample playback engine or the Falcon, the new or relatively new UVI um, synthesis and resampling engine. So I'm opening it now in the UVI workstation and you can see on the screen we have the string machine library loaded. Um, the string machine library consists of samples taken from classic string machines of uh, yesteryear. So uh, if you remember in the, we well, may not have been around, but if uh, you look back through history in the late uh, 20th century when synthesizers became kind of popular, um, the need was to try and emulate uh, existing acoustic instruments. Um, obviously now we sample, but uh, back the, then we couldn't sample, so we were um, synthesizing. And um, it became quite popular to try and emulate uh, various orchestral instruments, one of which was the string section. So a number of manufacturers uh, decided to put together these string machines. They're an analog synthesis engine generating kind of a saw wave, square wave, sine wave, multi-wave, multi-oscillator um, combinations with various filters and modulators to try and give the sound of orchestral strings. Um, they weren't altogether successful, they really don't sound very much like orchestral strings, however they created their own genre of uh, musical style. It's a great pad type instrument for filling. Um, you can either make them very tight and monophonic or big and wide and spready with lots of modulation and lots of uh, delay and reverb. And they're really great instruments. Um, I grew up uh, with Jean-Michel Jarre playing in my ears, and um, obviously Jarre used the uh, the string machines a lot uh, in his early work, and again in his later work, obviously sampled versions of them. So um, if you double click on the uh, load window in order to load the string machines, here are the string machines on the screen, as long as as well as some other stuff there. But you can see um, you've either got a choice of loading the string machines patches which are dedicated to different uh, string machines uh, so you've got the uh, Selena, you've got the Rhapsody, you've got the uh, Logan um, Excelsior, Excelsior and things like that. These are the, the classic uh, string machines as they were but also you've got this uh, string cord string machines with no sub patches and this main um, patch is essentially all of the string machines and you can then select which part of which string machine you want to layer up. So just to start with I'm going to load up the classic uh, PE2K and let that load um, and what you've got here is the uh, engine you saw this briefly on the screen before it's divided into three essential sections the top section is the samples from which it is taking its information. Um, you've got a A uh, oscillator essentially and a B oscillator. Each of them have volume and pan controls and then you've got a choice here of the uh, instrument you are loading and then underneath the uh, sample set you want to load. I'll go through some of these but I'm not going to go through all of these but it's worth noting that all of these classic string machines um, have got a selection of different uh, oscillator samples essentially to then uh, play with. Uh, you can choose A and B, you can just choose A or you can just choose B by deselecting these little window uh, buttons here and you can control the volume and pan of each of the sections and you can then obviously select uh, what you want. You've also got here a uh, octave switcher, you can go plus one or minus one octave to give yourself a little bit more um, spread if you want to and we'll look at that in a second. The second half of the window is this section down here uh, and this is quite an elegantly designed um, section looking at your uh, amplitude and filter envelopes, um, standard ADSR uh, for both as well as a depth control for filter. We'll come to what that does in a second. Um, in the amplitude section you've got simply your attack uh, decay sustain release um, and you've got an option to turn off velocity or you've got the option to turn velocity onto attack. Um, string machines, on the whole, weren't velocity sensitive. You played a note, it played a note. Um, it's quite nice to have the option of having velocity sensitivity. So um, by hitting 
the notes harder, obviously you get louder, uh, and you can also apply filters and things like that. But you've got the option of turning off the velocity so everything's just played full blast, and then you use your ADSR envelope. Uh, and velocity to attack is quite nice, so the harder you hit, uh, the quicker the attack, and we'll play with that in a second. Over here, you've got AB and AB. Uh, the A obviously refers to sample set A, the B refers to sample set B, and AB means that these two controls control both sample sets. So we'll leave on A at the moment. Um, you've also got the filter, ADSR filter, and the depth. The depth controls how much of this filter is applied to the sound, in other words, how much the filter envelope is applied to the sound. And then in extra to the uh, ADSR filter, you've also got filter uh, over here, you've got a, a low pass a uh, band pass and a high pass filter. You've got cutoff and cue controls as well as uh, a velocity linker. So you can dial in uh, your filter depending on what your velocity is. I mentioned that before. Underneath there in this second section, you've also got the pitch, coarse and fine tuning, which are great because they are um, up and down of two octaves, just in case you want to do something a little bit weird. And then you've got fine control plus or minus 100 cents, another, another tone there. So reset that back to zero. This is one of the annoying things about it. You have to remember to double click. There we are to go back to zero. You then got a glide option. Um, I'm not a great fan of gliding, but it just allows you to glide between notes uh, like a portamento. Um, you then got this last section here, which is the stereo section. Um, the stereo section is a pseudo stereo widener. Um, it's not like a, an algorithmic one where it just widens everything. It's note specific. So you can see here you've got off, alt or unison and um, the alt means every other note goes left or right depending on how wide you draw your spread and the unison assigns all notes left and right in, in a random sort of fashion so you actually get a, a lot more stereo feel. Um, the color just changes the tone of the sound and the tune changes the tune of each individual note as it's spread left and right so it's kind of a detune effect um, like a unison detuning uh, for each of your sounds. And then below here you've got a mod wheel control. It can be assigned to vibrato, tremolo or the filter, um, which is great. Uh, and you've got vibrato rate and tremolo rate and filter depth, but you haven't got tremolo depth and vibrato depth and you can't really change these too much. I'll, I'll come back to them later. And then we've got the effects here and these are incredibly emitted. We've got phaser on off with a mix, delay on off with a mix, and then reverb on off with a mix. I haven't yet loaded this into Falcon, but I'm hoping that if you can load this into Falcon, you can then then tweak these effects a little bit more because at the moment you can't change the speed of the phaser, for instance, or the time constant in the delay, which is a little bit uh, limiting. Anyway, so let's go into the sounds. Uh, this is the uh, PE2K classic uh, using the uh, let's choose strings one, and I'm just going to play some some little chords. So, as it starts, not a particularly inspirational sound, it just sounds like a kind of a fuzzy buzz, and that's not particularly exciting. So let's layer another strings, and put strings two, shove them up an octave, and then play the same. See, uh, now we're starting to hear a little bit more uh, interesting sound, so let's go to the A, B, change the attack, and add a little bit more release. Uh, at about half a second or more of release and 0.3 of attacks. So and now we've got a little bit more substance there. I'm going to put some filtering on the velocity and play with the high pass filter. So let's just listen to that. It's quite a good filter. So let's bring that down. So if you hit harder, you get a little bit more of the, um, the kind of the fierceness and the high frequency coming through there, and you can just increase the cue a little bit. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of um, control there. Let's add a little bit of reverb. So we click on the little red button and dial up some reverb. Um, it's just mix, 100%, 0%, so let's give it about 60. And then we've got some nice, lush reverb. Um, let's not add any delay for the moment, but let's play with the stereo spread. If you leave it on Alt, 
and leave the spread on zero, nothing happens. Turn the spread up to maximum. You get this very pseudo stereo effect with one sound coming out of one ear, the next note out the next ear, the next note out the other ear, and it alternates left and right. I don't like that sound, it sounds terrible, but I can imagine in a mix that actually may help quite a lot to separate the sound. So I'm going to leave it on unison, and now you can hear. So now I've got a little bit more stereo spread. Um, we're not going to play with the pitch, um, although I can just demonstrate. You've got fine control over pitch as well as um, some subtle control there. Of course the pitch bend I don't believe does anything to this. Uh, let's reset that back to zero. Let's just have a little play. Yes, it does. Pitch bend does something. That's a bit weird. Uh, you don't really want the pitch bend doing anything. Uh, and then finally, you've got mod wheel control. Let's play that chord again. And now we can apply some vibrato at a medium rate with, with the mod wheel. And we can change the speed. That's actually quite nice. And a bit of tremolo. See, that tremolo is actually quite nice, but it's in your face. You really want to be able to tone that down a bit, and you can't do that. Um, lastly, you can control the filter with the mod wheel, so let's just give that a little bit of a play. So that's actually quite nice. You can play a chord, push the mod wheel up. And because we've chosen a high pass filter, we've just got the high frequencies. And as you roll that down, you get your big fat sound again. Of course, if I change that to a low pass filter, we get the opposite effect. which again is quite a pleasant sound and you can imagine you know filling some kind of synthesized tones with that kind of that kind of sound um so what what did the string machine for me uh in the early days of string machines was the the kind of the affecting the the phasing the chorus the flanging and all the other modulating effects and this is really where this plugin this 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 sample library lets itself down it's got a phaser there we are on off button and it's got a mix knob so you can dial the phaser in, let's just play a chord. Turn the free filter off. There we are. There's a phaser. That's the only control you've got. You can't change the rate of that. So I'm going to turn that phaser off and then go into the effects rack that comes with the UVI player, add an effect, and I'm going to choose the uh, phaser. I'm going to choose uh, my phase, turn the frequency quite low, the min and max frequency is on maximum, so the spread is across the entire range of the filter, depth down a bit and feedback up nice and high, and then I'm going to go back to the instrument and play the same kind of stuff, this time going through the plug-in phaser that comes with the UVI workstation. And then you start to get some of those lovely modulating effects. 
So let's just uh, go through the other selection and just have a look and see what other sounds this can can generate from some of the presets. So uh, this was the classic PE2K with the strings one. Let's just turn that phaser off a second. Strings two. You can see a slightly deeper tone. Chorus one. Very jarry, that kind of sound. Chorus two. And then brass. And then a kind of organ sound. So that's the PEK2, and you can go through, I mean, the Selena was a classic, so let's load up the Selena. And now we've got the full Selena programmed in. So again, the Jar fans will recognize that sound. Add a little bit of uh, release using the AB control to control release. Take the attack down a little bit, go back to our little phaser and add a cross phase at this time. Nice and slow. Covering some of the range. There we go. Turn the depth down a bit. And now you've got the classic uh, jar phased string machine. <laughs> And of course you can add to that a lush reverb, shove the mix up nice and high, a little bit of delay, shove that mix up nice and high, slow that right down. And then you've got really great control, let's say if I put the full up an octave, you've got some, I mean this, these are just brilliant kind of pads. You know, that's just uh, that's just brilliant. So um, that's the basics of it. If we then go uh, into the String Machine's main patch itself where it loads up all the different key groups, you've now got a, a much bigger selection of patch uh, information to choose from. You can choose any one of your um, String Machines and then you can choose any one of the sample sets that comes with that String Machine and mix them together as a A, B, combination and then what they've done is saved a whole load of presets up in this new window that appears up here and this allows you to go through your various presets so um, a nice default stereo string machine you can see it's already got a little bit of release trail on it uh, and it's got delay and reverb and it's got a filter associated so you can see already they've done a bit of programming for you so again <laughs> That's just a nice Selena already there. And you can go to a, a melody machine and then you've got a different kind of. Uh, EKO Uni strings. sound and you can keep going through they've got a vp330 there the old roland uh, vocoder type thing uh, and then they start going into some weird synthesis -y stuff so spectral pad isn't a string machine it's just a 
nicely modulated in a synth pad. Um, and then they start doing weird things like putting gates on it. So where the heck is that gate coming from? Well, on the edit window, underneath the edit, is this step thing. You see, you click on that knob there and you get this step. This is a step sequencer where you've got amplitude and uh, filtering and you can apply it to either part A or part B or both part A and part B. So you can see here we've got um, a step going ba 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 which is the... And it's only doing it on part A. So if I turn down part B, you've got this constant string sound. And you've got full control. And you can just play away to your heart's content and you've got two different steps so you're going to have a completely different step i'm just going to make this sound revolting and have step um two affecting b so you now i've got two different step sequences and you can smooth these off and you can change the resolution so halves quarters and you've got some great control so it is actually quite a fun Thing you can do. Um, obviously, if you bought a Selena string machine, you wouldn't get this step sequencer. Uh, this is something they've added to this uh, virtual machine to make it a little bit more fun. And you can see uh, it does make things actually quite fun. You can do some interesting synthesis with the kind of string machine feel, uh, which is quite nice. Um, it, it isn't authentic. It's not a great reproduction of a string machine. There are better ones out there. Um, but this was 39 euros in the sale, which is uh, not particularly large amounts of money. And actually, what it's got is pretty good for what it needs to do. Um, you know, if you want a really good string machine, Arturia make a fantastic uh, virtual string machine. Um, but it cost a lot more than 39 euros. Um, the UVI workstation is very powerful. You can add all these effects internally. Of course, you could put this through an external effects as well and do a whole load more with it. So uh, on balance, it's not a bad uh, machine, not a bad sound. It works with the UVI. It works with Falcon and the workstation, which is good because they are um, kind of bread and butter to many uh, virtual machines. So uh, there we are, string machines from UVI. <laughs>